Welcome RPA Champions, this is the RPA Champion and in today's video we are going to be continuing our journey discovering Power Automate Desktop. Now just as a reminder, Power Automate Desktop is the new free tool made available for everybody from Microsoft just a few weeks ago. And right now we are in March. So awesome, Power Automate Desktop, you should start learning it and in today's video we are going to be creating a web flow. Now let's get right into it. Let's call this flow Googs. And just as a reminder, in the previous video, we created a flow that automates an application on the computer. Now in today's video, we are going to be creating a, uh, an automation that is going to automate a web application. Now with these two components, now that you have learned how to open applications and how to open a browser, you will be able to uh, start automating different processes. So the first steps have been covered. Now, we can either use the web recorder, and if we click on the web recorder, we will be presented with a checkbox of different options of different browsers that we can use. Now, I'm using Edge, but I will also not be using the web recorder. I will be building the flow manually. And here in the background, you can see uh, Power Automate desktops and or uh, not desktop, Power Automate in the cloud and all of my previous flows. Now, to open a browser, let's search for the web automation and let's drag in and drop the edge connector or action. So, this has a couple of really useful tools and features that are going to help you save time. So, if you are an RPA developer and you are used to maybe some more traditional technologies that I will not mention, you would know that, for example, to do some of these things, uh, like, for example, if a pop-up dialog appears, close it, press a button, do nothing. So in our case, we're going to close it. So to do all of these things, it might require you more steps. But in Power Automate Desktops, uh, it merged quite a few steps already into, into, one, into one step, which is really awesome. So it gives me the chance to maximize the desktop or the, uh, view the information however I want, access the link where I would like to go. So in our case, let's just go to google.com. It is gonna store the variable, it's gonna create a variable called browser and it's gonna, I imagine, store the instance of the of this that we open inside of this variable so that we could reference it or use it later. All right, so this is the first step that we created and this is already an action. So what this does, this already should launch the browser, it should maximize it and it should also send it to the Google website. Now it opened it on my other desktop. It was full screen and it went to Google. So what should be the next step? The next step, we would like to interact with the different things that we see on the page. So whatever the page we see, we would want to insert information, we would want to click on different buttons, we would want to extract information. And all of this we can do with Power Automate. Now back here, so what would be the first thing that we want to do? We would want to send uh, or we would want to search for something. We're on the Google Chrome page. We want to search for something and then click the search button. So let's do that. So what we need to do, let's see what different options we have from the web automation. So we can click a link on a web page. So I imagine this would be useful for clicking the button to search. And then we have to also uh, write some text inside of uh, inside of the search bar. Now we can do that in different ways. Now we see that when we go to Google, the, the input bar is already active. So let's see if we can uh, send some keys. And that is perfect. We can use send keys. Now mouse and keyboard. Let's go discover it and let's test this. We'll just put test. And again here we can see that it has different it is really cool. It has different options for you already to kind of customize it and uh, and fine-tune it uh, with things that might have taken you extra time to do. But here they have been packed into one really powerful connector. Send text as hardware keys. Uh, yes, we are going to do that. Absolutely. Uh, so we have launch edge, then we send the keys, and we send the keys test, and that should uh, input it inside of the input. Now, 
after every step it's good practice just to test everything just to make sure that everything is working now this time it opened in this browser that is great and is it all right perfect it wrote test now we have made already our first automation that is amazing that is pretty cool it's opening a web browser and is inserting some text inside now the next thing that we should do is let's click let's make a click so all right so the click is click download link no click link on the web page awesome all right so this uh, right now we uh, are um, we are going to start interacting with different elements on the page what does that mean that means that we have this page that is google and this page is made out of different elements like the button and the url and so on now we want to find a way that we want to capture these elements so this is a, a really important part of uh, of power automate and this allows you to uh, integrate different elements both on the application or on the web browser now to do that we would add ui elements and now we're going to see some pretty cool ui elements no let's not open this let's open our browser and let's find this button right here now you can see that it uh, a really great option from power automate is that is that it integrates with uh, everything really fast it's spying all the different elements uh, really really quickly and that is uh, that is just great because uh, some tools might be a little bit slower and might not be so reactive you might have to use different technologies to find different things but anyways let's try this and see if this works so to select an element you would click control and click once you have identified the element you would control and click and then you would see that element right here now we see that this is it has taken also a screenshot let's just click done go back here it has inserted automatically the element for right now let's just leave it like this let's wait for the page to load and this is another great thing so this is what this means is that power automate is going to wait for that page to load before it uh, it tries to uh, push this button now also if there is a dialogue or if there is an unexpected pop-up that we were not expecting just close it and this really prevents many uh, many uh, times that our robot could break all right so let's close the different browsers not to run out of memory and let's launch our process and see if it is working now there is so much more to say about ui elements about different components but for right now okay it has opened on a different page so right now i imagine it should write test or it has or it got stuck for some reason all right let's try this one more time let's close all of this it found an error all right let's close a couple of these netflix movies Awesome, let's try this again. It has opened it on another page again. Perfect, awesome. And if you have seen, it has highlighted the different elements that it has clicked. Now we could go, uh, go and continue, continue searching and spying on different elements. But I think this covers the introduction. Uh, just before we close this video, I want to show you the UI elements on the side. So we've used this side or, uh, of the of the studio previously already. Also, when creating the in, in, when spying our application and when creating the application. Now on this side, we can also see the different UI elements that we have created. Now this is one of the elements. This is the button, the Google search button. Now we can customize this we can add, rename the selector make it a little bit something more readable and something that we can understand and that's something definitely that we have to do when we have 
many elements or they're not they're gonna stop making sense but another thing that we can do is very interesting is we can customize this selector what does it mean that means that we can fine-tune really this selector but what is even better is that we can make this selector dynamic meaning that if we have different elements on the page that are for example boxes that are appearing or uh, things that get loaded onto the page we can uh, customize our selectors in a dynamic way so that we could for example have instead of one two three four five and six that is incrementing as the boxes for example keep on appearing and in one of the future videos if you stick along i will be showing you how we could uh, create an automation that maybe just goes to different social networks and behaves as a uh, very annoying human would now if you would like to see a video of that leave me a comments below and i will start as soon as possible a series about that now i really hope that you guys enjoyed that everybody has enjoyed this video and uh, thank you so much for watching give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel have a great day